I tried. I really, really tried. Darn those going out of business sales. Greetings one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Well, it's a good thing I said it was going to be a slow February on my channel, because... Uh, <laughs> It was not slow on uh, in other aspects of my life. Uh, yes, I, I have been gone for half the month, and uh, there's pretty good reason for it. Well, of course, I mentioned in the beginning that I was just going to take the month off to relax from YouTubing. <laughs> Didn't get much of a chance to relax from anything else, though. Uh, those of you who don't follow me on uh, Twitter or Instagram, uh, I was in the hospital a uh, weekend before last. Uh, so yeah, nothing super, super critical. Uh, basically, I had a gallbladder attack, and I actually had to have my gallbladder removed. So yes, it, it started uh, Sunday evening, a couple of week weekends ago, with what felt like constipation, you know, like that, that feeling like you've got a great big bag of rocks sitting in your gut, you know? And uh, by Wednesday morning, I had developed a, uh, well, actually, by, by Monday, midday, Monday, Monday afternoon, I had a dull pain in my side, my right side. By Wednesday morning, it uh, the pain had gotten bad enough that I really couldn't walk or stand or take a deep breath without getting a shooting pain in there. So we, uh, I got went to the doctor. Uh, they had actually a same-day opening for the doctor, thank goodness. Uh, she took a look at me for a few minutes and referred me to the emergency room, telling me that I had a gallbladder attack. At first, I thought maybe it was a, a kidney infection or something, because that's what I think is basically there where the pain felt like it was, was kidneys. So, uh, but yes, it was un uh, actually a gallbladder attack. Referred me to the ER uh, Wednesday afternoon. I was admitted by Thursday morning. I was being wheeled into the operating room to have my gallbladder taken out. So, oh, what fun. Not really, no. Um, so yeah, they actually did the procedure laparoscopically, which is uh, sometimes they call it keyhole surgery. They cut, you know, just like a one to two inch incisions, uh, two or three of those. Those heal better than one great big incision. But yeah, they, they kind of uh, put their little remote control toys in and uh, do the entire procedure, uh, you know, electronically or, you know, by what standard procedure now. You know, back, back uh, 20 years ago, it was pretty new. But uh, yes, uh, so laparoscopically means that uh, the pain is a lot less, and the recovery time recovery time is a lot faster. So, uh, yes, it's only been nine days. The surgery was on Thursday the 9th, and today is Saturday the 18th. So, yeah, nine days. Uh, my mobility is 85 to 90 percent back. I can't lift more than 20 pounds for six weeks after the surgery, so that's in that's a restriction in place. But uh, otherwise, I'm doing pretty good. I can reach down to. Uh, you know, tie my shoes and I can roll over in bed without pain, which I couldn't do a few days ago. Uh, so yeah, it's like pretty much every day I feel like I'm getting a little bit better. So so yeah, um, clean bill of health. I just have to uh, uh, watch my diet. And uh, I'd kind of been looking for, <laughs> I hadn't been looking for it this way, but I'd been trying to find an excuse to uh, get a kick in the butt to change my eating habits. My eating habits have not been great. I've... Uh, yeah, not been eating well. So, uh, yeah, most people who have their gallbladders removed can go back to a normal diet. I kind of don't want to. Uh, it's the only thing is you kind of have to moderate your intake of fatty foods because the gallbladder controlled, you know, the gallbladder released bile on, you know, in time with your digestion so that when you, when uh, a bunch of fatty foods hit your small intestine, it can break them down real good. But now that control is gone, so the bile just kind of drips into your intestine. So you have to moderate your intake of different types of foods. So uh, I've, you know, I've had mild indigestion here and there, but uh, otherwise I've been, you know, trying to eat, eat well, eat better. Uh, and I am actually seven pounds lighter now than I was the day I was admitted to the hospital. So things are working. If uh, Wish me luck in the uh, holding on to that, uh, that weight loss and possibly expanding that weight loss uh, in the days, days and weeks and months to come. So anyway, uh, so that, that's uh, part of what's been going on, and that kind of helped me uh, uh, avoid uh, spending money on records and CDs like I had uh, kind of pledged I would do for the month of February. But, well, wouldn't you know, 
uh, the FYE up in Salem, Oregon, is having their going out of business sale. And, well, considering my trials and tribulations, my medical trials and tribulations, as well as the fact that you can't exactly ask a store to put a going out of business sale on hold, I figured, I you know, I had to kind of uh, interrupt or disrupt my, uh, my no by February. So, but darn it if I didn't go out in a blaze of glory. So, uh, here's a... <laughs> Uh, thing and in my uh, compact disc world uh, CD rack that I got from Skip's CD World at the uh, going out of business. So yes, um, I took a little bit of log footage. You'll see in uh, just a second here. Oh, well, you'll see it now. Roll them. Okay, so this is it. Uh, I thought my last trip up here was going to be my last trip, but it is going to be this one because I don't know if you can see the little sign in there, but uh, last two days for the FYE up here in Salem, Oregon. Uh, today is Saturday, February 18th. So yes, after tomorrow, they are closed. Uh, so yeah, when I was talking to the clerk on the phone, she said, uh, for the most part, her words, there was quite a bit of stuff left in the store. So we're about to go in and find out. So yes, as you can see, the uh, stock on the shelves was pretty much what it was a month ago when I was last there. It was, it was about a month ago, three weeks ago, I think. Uh, and strangely enough, well, one thing that kind of explains why not a lot was gone off of the racks was their discounts on their last weekend in business, their discounts hadn't gone up any more than they had been a, a month ago. So yes, uh, all music and video was still, uh, the new music and video, 50% off, used was 75% off. So I kind of would have hoped that by their very last weekend in business, they would have upped their discount. But you know, just just uh, try and get try and make sense of the decisions that the corporate overlords of these chain stores make. I mean, come on. Anyway, I, I found the best of what well, I found. What I found, I can't remember how many CDs I got. I actually didn't get any DVDs or Blu-rays just because the discount wasn't any greater. <coughs> Excuse me. But I'm going to show you the, the best of what I picked up here. Uh, I got five new CDs, and these were all 50% uh, off sticker price. First, uh, and there was some still some pretty good stuff in there. Uh, first off, we have uh, What's the Story, Morning Glory by Oasis, the three CD uh, deluxe edition back from back in 2014. I This is the first Oasis album I've ever bought. And uh, it's like, if I'm going to own one Oasis album, this is going to be it. This is the one that's got pretty much all the hits on it. And uh, yeah, I I'm, I'm, don't know that I'm necessarily an Oasis fan. I've never been, I've never really clamored to get any of their CDs. But, you know, I figured for half off, yeah, uh, twelve fifty. So yeah, if you're going to pick that one up. And, uh, and if I'm going to pick one up, why not make it the deluxe edition for probably less than what you pay for the regular edition brand new in most stores. Uh, next one here is a soundtrack uh, from a movie, movie that I have never seen. And this is one of those soundtracks that uh, the soundtrack itself was more successful than the movie ever was. FM. And this is a two-disc set. It is obviously remastered. I don't know if it's expanded because I looked online and the original album was a 2LP set. And this is spread over two CDs, so it's probably not expanded any beyond the original. But the lineup of songs on here is just amazing. Uh, Steely Dan, of course, does the title song, FM. You got Bob Seger, Steve Miller, Foreigner, Tom Petty, Eagles, Boz Skaggs, Boston, Linda Ronstadt, uh, Billy Joel, the Doobie Brothers, James Taylor. I mean, <laughs> why not? This is kind of one of those uh, <clears throat> uh, Forrest Gump or uh, American Graffiti caliber soundtracks with the lineups that they've got on here. So I don't know why I've never bothered owning the soundtrack before. I, I do want to see the movie at some point. Uh, and of course, since it takes place at an FM radio station, they're gonna the soundtrack's gonna be loaded with music, of course. So yeah, I'll check it. I've got to check and see if that movie's on streaming. Maybe I can watch. It. Maybe I'll watch it tonight. Who knows? And then the next one I picked up is uh, Steve Cropper with the album "With a Little Help My from My Friends." If you don't know who Steve Cropper is, he was basically I don't know that there ever necessarily was a lead guitarist or a main guitarist for the Motown backing band, the Funk Brothers. It's kind of like, if you've heard guitar on a classic Motown track, Steve Cropper was probably the guy who was playing it. 
But yeah, this is his debut solo album, and so I was very curious, uh, very interested to see this. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, listening to that. And uh, this next one, and these ones that I've been showing you so far are all new ones. This one I had never heard about, uh, kind of like the Steve Cropper one. It is the Brecker Brothers Band with the album Heavy Metal Bebop. With a title like that, it's going to rope me in, and I'm, I've got to listen to it. Uh, I have no idea what to expect off of this. Um, maybe it will be uh, what the title suggests, a mixture of bebop jazz and heavy metal, or at least rock, uh, stylings. So yeah, um, Brecker Brothers are Randy and Michael. I'm pulling that out of, out of the top of my head. I may be completely wrong, or I might be right. But anyway, I figured I've got to check that one out. And uh, the last, yeah, the last new CD I picked up was uh, Carol King, the Carnegie Hall concert from 1971. So, yeah, I'd, um, I I love Carol King. I've got at least one Carol King. Uh, yeah, I've got the Carol King and James Taylor live album, uh, Live at the Troubadour, I think it was, which they did in 2006, 2010, something around there. And I think I have another, at least one more live album or partially live album from either or, Carol King or James Taylor. But uh, there's nothing wrong with adding another live album to my collection. And uh, yes, the um, jewel case, as you can see, is pretty, pretty, pretty banged up, but I've got a bunch of replacement cases. And uh, so, yeah, those were the new CDs I got. And I thought I'd show you a selection of the used CDs I got. And I've always hesitated to buy used stuff from FYE because it's sealed up and you never know what condition it's in. Uh, one time I got a two-disc set, what well, was supposed to be a two-disc set, and one of the CDs was missing. So, uh, But since everything was 75% off on used, I figured if I'm going to be spending a dollar or occasionally less than a dollar, maybe a little bit more than a dollar on some of these, I figure it's worth the risk of you know, buying them, bringing them home, see what condition they're in. Who knows? Uh, what have I got to lose? First one here is Amistad, the soundtrack by John Williams from the Spielberg movie, I think. Uh, again, it's a movie I have not seen and really want to see, uh, but I've heard the soundtrack is fantastic. It's John Williams, of course. So yeah, I figured as I go through these, I'm going to very quickly open them up and see what the condition is in. Let's see here. This part here, and this one is in excellent condition. A couple little tiny scuffs. So, uh, yeah. Yay. Let me stop. Now, this one is another another soundtrack. Yeah, I picked up a few soundtracks. Uh, didn't think I would find any. But this one is the soundtrack Volume 2 from the TV series Due South. And Volume 1 was in my sister's collection, and I, I never knew they made a Volume 2, so I figured why not go ahead and pick it up. Uh, yes, Due South was a show that's, um, as you can kind of tell by the silhouette here, uh, a U.S. Uh, American cop teaming up with a Canadian RCMP officer. And that was kind of the, the premise of the series was them, you know, working together, a Canadian and, a, and an American, in their uh, different law enforcement styles. And so the soundtracks, uh, Volume 1 and probably Volume 2 as well, are loaded up with Canadian artists primarily. So let's go ahead and check out the condition of this one. Uh, the jewel case is a little bit weathered, so I'm kind of hesitant about this one. Do South Volume 2. Oh, this is in perfect condition. Excellent. So yes, I figured it was kind of cool that, you know, um, complete the set that I started with my with the CD collection I inherited from my sister and add this one to it. So excellent. Next one up is, uh, you may remember that I have been on a bit of a Matt Nathanson uh, kick lately. So this is the next of, of, of his albums that I did not have. And see if I can... Sometimes I can get these open with uh, gliding my fingernail across, or thumbnail across it. And uh, So we'll see. Yes, this is Show Me Your Fangs is the name of the album. Uh, yeah. Interesting cover, no doubt. Oh, this is in pretty shady condition. But the disc is in pretty good, good condition. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. The case is what it is. You know, 
Oh, and of course they put a sticker. I didn't realize it, but they put a sticker right across the freaking track listing. Hopefully it'll come off with no issues. I won't waste the time on this video trying to take the stickers off. And then, oh, then we have, <laughs> I guess I'd show you the CDs before I open them. Uh, Eric Hutchinson, this is his album Pure Fiction. I have two of his CDs, and I believe this is the next one in the progression uh, after the two that I had. And again, they put the uh, a sticker on the inside. Ouch. Don't want to cut, give myself a paper cut underneath my thumbnail. That would not be good. Uh, yes, they have, an, again, a uh, sticker right on the track listing. Why can't you guys just put your stickers on top of the plastic wrap? And it looks like pretty good. It, it was sold as used, but I would I would bet that this is, yeah, probably new because completely spotless disc. So, yeah. I like Eric Hutchinson and uh, just waited for forever to pick this one up. This was from, oh, can't read the copyright date because it's covered up by the sticker. And then this one, I didn't even know this existed, and I'm so happy that I found it. Uh, Johnny Mathis and Henry Mancini teaming up for an album. This is uh, pretty cool. I, I love both of them, and I guess the album title is The Hollywood Musicals. So, uh, yeah. I really hope this one is in good condition. Yes, I've got a razor blade right there and a pair of scissors, and I'm not using them because I'm dumb. Anyway. Pop the plastic off, and... Let's check the condition. Oh, fingerprints. Oh, yep, just fingerprints. Little teeny tiny scratch, but yeah, fingerprints can come off with uh, a little work on uh, with a microfiber cloth. So, yeah, no big deal with fingerprints. As long as they're not really the gooey, sticky fingerprints, which every once in a while I've gotten a CD that had. What did these people, the previous owners, have on their hands that they touched the CD with that made it like that? I don't know. Don't think I want to know. Anyway, this next one uh, is Edith Piaf. Uh, she is a French uh, chanteuse, a French singer, and this is a double disc 30th anniversary set. And yeah, there was no price sticker on this, but it was only like three bucks, I think. Uh, and I think that was actually pre discount. So, uh, okay, come on. There we go. This one off. And I have an idea. Let's use this to cut that. And there's CD1, which is in nearly perfect condition. Yay! And, oh, it does have the booklet. There's a booklet. And CD2. Uh, eh. It's in iffy condition. A couple scratches on it, but... Not bad. Hey, for the price, no complaints. So yes, there is Edith Piaf. Now, <laughs> this next one sounded kind of interesting. I figured, what the heck, for the price that it is, although it was one of the more expensive used CDs, but what the heck. Um, the Vienna Boys Choir goes pop. Uh, yeah, the Vienna Boys Choir singing um, pop songs from... Uh, Oh, the disc is uh, copyright 2002, so songs from the 90s and 80s. Uh, songs by Celine Dion, The Beatles, so going back to the 60s. Uh, Backstreet Boys. <laughs> I just noticed they sing Get Down by the Backstreet Boys. Okay. Uh, Earth, Wind & Fire, Madonna, Metallica, Prince. So it's an interesting collection, I figured. So uh, why not give it a shot? I normally do not like uh, boys' choirs just because they sing in such a high register. Uh, but, hey, what the heck. Now, I noticed that the uh, the hub in the center of the disc was gone, so the disc was kind of rattling around loose. Uh, it's got a few scratches on it, but it should play okay. So, yeah. Not bad. And again, for the price, how can you complain, right? And this next one, here's another soundtrack that I found. This is a, uh, it's a cute movie that I watched recently, uh, within the last year. It's an Australian movie called The Sapphires. And it's about this guy who uh, manages this girl group, puts together this girl group, and they tour, what do they tour Vietnam or something like that? 
Uh, yeah, and he is, oh, I can't remember what his name was, but he was also a co-star in the movie Pirate Radio, which uh, in some countries was known as The Boat That Rocked. Uh, and that's an excellent movie. One of my favorite music-related movies was Pirate Radio. But yes, uh, it's great stuff. And a lot of the songs on here are are by an artist named Jessica Mallboy. I think that's how you pronounce it. She was a winner or runner-up on one of these uh, seasons of Australian Idol. So it's kind of a little trivia note there for you. But yeah, they sing a lot of the classic Motown songs, you know, being a Motown-style group. Uh, so yeah, the soundtrack was... Uh, Model after them, and I had no idea that they had, that the soundtrack was ever put out on uh, disc. So, kind of cool to see that. And yes, Jessica Mallboy plays one of the uh, singers in the girl group. And this looks like a new, yeah, sold as used, but it looks like a brand new CD. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, check the movie out if you have a chance to. It, I recommend it. And then, speaking of Australian idols, I actually found. Uh, Another one, and this is one that I had actually been thinking recently about uh, reacquiring. I'd had it a long time ago. Same story with me. Uh, got rid of it uh, in a CD purge and uh, kind of regretted it, but, you know, and I saw it and thought about it, and I decided, okay, at this price, so uh, what was it, to 250 since it was 9.99 sticker price. Uh, the guy's name is Ryan Malcolm, and he was the winner of season one of Australian Idol. So let's check out the condition of the disc. Looking back through the discs to make sure that I didn't uh, forget to actually show you what some of these discs are. I'm, I'm so anxious anxious to open them up to make sure that they're in decent condition. Yeah, the booklet's kind of got wrinkles and stuff in it, but oh yeah, the disc is fine. A couple little fingerprints. So, cool. I've done well with uh, uh, the conditions of the CDs. And then the next one here... Um, I've picked up her most recent album, uh, actually on my last stop at FYE, because everything, you know, it was 50% off, it was brand new. Uh, Florence and the Machine, uh, picked, you know, as I said, Dance Fever, I picked that one up. So this is her Unplugged album. Uh, $12.99 uh, sticker price, so so $13, uh, for about 4 bucks used, um, two discs. And so, yeah, I decided to go ahead and, uh, yeah, disc one is uh, audio and disc two is video, so... DVD, presumably. And so let's go ahead and see what condition of these is. And they had a special, the Target edition of Lungs, their first album. But I opened it up last time I was there and uh, looked at it, and there was a nice big scuff right uh, on the, uh, toward the inside of the disc. So I didn't want to take my chances on buying it. So let's see how this one is. Ooh, perfect condition. This one looks like it was brand new also. So, cool. Looking forward to sampling Florence and the Machine Unplugged. And I got another double disc thing. This is the last, next to last CD I'll be showing you. Another double disc set. The Essential Broadway. I've been wanting to pick up, and I actually did uh, from a thrift store that is uh, sadly just went out of business. Uh, I was there a couple weeks before it closed and picked up a one CD Broadway um, collection and kind of liked it. And so I decided, you know, why not? Since this was there and it's only, you know, 250 uh, and two discs, I thought I'd go ahead and take another dip into Broadway. So I, seeing that I love music so much, I don't know why I've never been able to get into Broadway. I don't know. I guess <laughs> part of me thinks that, you know, people, you know, in regular situations and all of a sudden breaking into song and dance numbers is just unrealistic. But then what do I watch sometimes? I watch things like Star Trek and science fiction and fantasy. So I feel kind of like a hypocrite saying musicals aren't realistic. That's the way my brain thinks sometimes. So <laughs> take with that what you will. Uh, so let's see here what condition... Sometimes these can be temperamental about, uh, oh yeah, very, very good condition. Boy, I have lucked out with the condition of these used CDs. But yeah, um, so much good stuff in here from uh, from Oklahoma, way back at the beginnings of Broadway, all the way up to, you can see down here, there's a selection from Hairspray. So yeah, and yeah, this collection is 
2007. So cool. And yes, another volume to add to my uh, Sony Label Group Essentials series. And now the final disc in the bunch, I, my, my haul from FYE today, is 10987654321 by Midnight, Binne, uh, Midnight Oil. Yes, I can speak. Um, yes, a uh, video, uh, a channel that I've been watching lately, Briar's Music Showcase. Check him out if you haven't yet. Very worth the subscription. Um, he has been on a bit of a Midnight Oil kick lately, and he mentioned that this was his favorite album. And yes, this is one of them that I did not have yet, obviously, since I bought it. Uh, so I thought I would check it out. And I, I have not been disappointed with a Midnight Oil album yet. So uh, now the proof of the pudding, so to speak. Let's see what condition this one is in. Mm, this one looks dicey. Yes, not in very good condition. It'll probably play, but uh, I will be on the lookout for one that's in better shape. So, hey, if this is the one and only bum CD that I got out of this lot, then uh, doing pretty good here. So, yeah, there is my FYE haul for February of 2022. And I thought before I would go, I would kind of... Uh, show you back uh, in my last haul video from January, you will recall that one of the things I bought from FYE was, excuse me, a CD singles box set by a group called Boyzone. I thought I would at least show you uh, what the box looks like now after I was able to clean it up and repair it uh, to the extent that I could. But uh, yeah, here it is. All of the uh, stickers and stuff are gone except for the hype sticker here. I thought I would leave that. And yeah, it's it's cleaner than it was, but it's still kind of, uh, uh, you know, it, it was never going to be in super shape. But yeah, I took all of the uh, seams that were split. I just taped them up with uh, uh, clear plastic uh, packaging tape. So yes, not a professional repair job by any means. Here you can see the, you know, I just kind of kind of did what I could because... If the box was in better shape cosmetically, then I would have made be much better effort to fix it uh, structurally. But uh, it is what it is, and its age kind of, you know, its age gives it character. The the scuffs and stuff give it kind of character, but uh, yep, all the discs there. One of the uh, cases had a broken hub, you know, the, the teeth that hold the disc in place were busted, and as it turns out, I had one uh, spare uh, of these kind of cases. The, I think they're called J cases for uh, um, import CD singles. I had one on reserve, so I've transplanted it into that one. So yes, all the discs are in really good shape, and uh, now the box got repaired, so it's uh, looking pretty-ish. But anyway, so yeah, I thought, I thought you guys would have fun seeing my FYE haul. The last hurrah for FYE up in Salem, Oregon. I'm going to miss that place uh, for, for its flaws. It was fun to go to and spend two or three hours just poking around and uh, occasionally finding some good deals. And, of course, these last few last couple of trips found some really good deals because they're going out of business. Uh, so, yeah. I uh, hope the guys that were there bounce back and uh, find other jobs elsewhere. A few of them I talked to already have other jobs lined up, so uh, yay for them. But, uh, yeah, one less reason to go up to Salem anymore. Unless by some miracle they relocate into a new store, which I'm kind of having my doubts that they ever will. But uh, anyway, so I guess before I continue rambling on any further, that'll do it for my FYE haul for February of 2022. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and uh, browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.